Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let us begin today's presentation with the dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafi'ah wa rizqan tayyiba wa amalan mutaqabbala. O oh Allah, I ask you for knowledge that is of benefit, a good provision and deeds that will be accepted. I am Dr. Naveed Alam. I am consultant neurologist, Allied Hospital, Faisalabad. Today, I will discuss with you multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is the leading cause of disability in young adults after trauma. There are other causes of disability in old age, but it usually affects young people. That's why it's a leading cause of disability. Multiple sclerosis is the most common acquired inflammatory demyelinating disease of the central nervous system, brain and spinal cord. Remember that the nervous system is divided into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. There are other causes that of uh, peripheral nervous uh, demyelination of uh, peripheral nervous system, but this uh, most common cause of central nervous system demyelination is multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a difficult diagnosis because it has numerous presentations. I will show you later on. Incidence of multiple sclerosis varies geographically. It has uh, different incidence and prevalence rates according to the distance from the equator uh, ranging from 2 to 150 per 100,000 population usually affects uh, adult, adults of uh, 15 to 50 years of age females are more prone to have multiple sclerosis than males <coughs> the pathogenesis of multiple sclerosis not uh, well defined but the uh, postulated mechanism is that uh, an infectious agent, genetic predisposition or environmental factors these three play simultaneously to form an abnormal immunologic response. This immunologic response, this abnormal response then causes, uh, destroys uh, myelin myelin sheet of the central nervous system leading to multiple sclerosis. CNS autoimmunity multiple sclerosis is a cell mediated autoimmune disease. Pathologically multiple sclerosis is characterized by initially by inflammation by inflammatory cells accumulate around the site and then demyelination occurs and ultimately there is axon loss. Axon is damaged. <coughs> there are uh, nervous system is comprised of uh, seven different uh, functional systems in which there is pyramidal, sensory, visual, cerebellar, bowel and bladder and cerebral. All systems are affected in multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is a difficult diagnosis because it can patients can present from any symptom from top of the head to the big toe. For example, central symptoms of fatigue, cognitive decline, depression, unstable mood, or uh, visual disturbances. Patients can present with visual disturbances or speech disturbances, difficulty swallowing, musculoskeletal weakness, spasm or uh, ataxias, sensory disturbance, patients can present with numbness of a part of the body, bowel and bladder incontinence may occur in patients with multiple sclerosis. That's why it's a difficult diagnosis. But the most common presentation in is sensory disturbances in the limbs. Patient present with the thumb numbness and tingling in the limbs or visual loss is the second most common presentation. These are the types of multiple sclerosis. Most common type is 
relapsing this one relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis it means that patient is uh, at this steady state and there is a uh, relapse in the disease there a relapse occurs and then this disease there is a remission there is no decline in this uh, state in this time period and then again there is a relapse and then remission remission is uh, not followed 100% by uh, by 100% recovery but there is some accumulation of disability that uh, uh, gradual disability is accumulated in the patients this is relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis this relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis 85% of the patients with relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis are converted into secondary progressive multiple sclerosis there are relapses initially but at some age in time say 55 years patients then gradually declines and disability is accumulated not typically characterized by relapse what is a relapse relapse is a sudden uh, uh, sudden weakness in the previous functional systems for example relapse is a patient presents with the uh, disturbance in uh, vision before that his or her vision was well but now there is a decline in vision this is a relapse this is a, an example of an attack or relapse patient was able to walk but uh, for last two days he is not able to walk due to weakness of both low limb due to demyelination in the thoracic cord patient uh, walk, was able to use his right upper limb and right low limb but he is not now able to uh, use right upper limb and low limb due to uh, relapse due to an attack of uh, demyelination of on the left side of the brain <clears throat> The third one is the primary progressive multiple sclerosis. There are no relapses. This is a gradual, steady decline in the in the uh, functions of the patient. This uh, disability is gradually accumulated in that patient. This is progressive relapsing multiple sclerosis. There is a relapse, but during both relapses, there is decline in the disability. In relapsing remitting patient there in both in between these relapses there is no um, accumulation of more disability here patient is static these are the four types of multiple sclerosis uh, brief review of all these types relapsing remitting is most common type of uh, multiple sclerosis attack duration mostly one to two attacks per month uh, per year actually attack duration is a patient uh, the attack may persist for one to two months the attack frequency is one relapse uh, almost one relapse per year secondly progressive ms as i already told you 75 percent of the patients with the relapsing limiting ms will evolve into secondary progressive ms by 35 years or after that it is characterized by axonal damage primary progressive See MS gradually pro, uh, worsening disability without relapses. It starts later in age and uh, it is male predominant disease. Otherwise, <coughs> relapsing limiting MS is uh, female predominant disease. Relapsing progressive MS, least common form of MS, similar to primary progressive MS, but with occasional super added relapses on background of progressive disability from the outset. Now, the clinically isolated syndrome. Clinically isolated syndrome is a first ever event of uh, central nervous system demyelination that is uh, compatible with the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. In multiple sclerosis, there should be at least two attacks uh, to label the patient as multiple sclerosis. Uh, but if the patient presents with the first ever attack, he will be labeled as a case of clinically isolated syndrome. So, 85% chance of developing MS in a patient who presents with clinically isolated syndrome. Optic neuritis is the second most common presentation in uh, patients of multiple sclerosis. Uh, patients present with uh, sudden 
loss or dimness of vision optic neuritis uh, in adults is uh, usually unilateral in nature but uh, in uh, pediatric population optic neuritis is bilateral simultaneous loss of vision in both eyes diagnosis of multiple sclerosis is uh, on history and examination based take a detailed history of any previous attack uh, of uh, that is compatible with multiple sclerosis and then examination of uh, whole of the central nervous system the investigations that are required to diagnose a patient with multiple sclerosis mri brain cervical spine and dorsal spine plain and contrast both images are required if uh, there is a doubt in uh, uh, of if there is a single attack a history of single attack then csf examination could be done and sent for oligoclonal bands visual evoke potentials could help and auditory evoke potentials also could be beneficial for the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis this is the revised mcdonald's criteria for multiple sclerosis uh, as i already told you that uh, there should be two attacks in the history two attacks in the history and clinically we should uh, find uh, two evidence of two uh, lesions then no further uh, the investigation is required patient is a case of uh, multiple sclerosis and then other there are other scenarios as well how to manage a patient with multiple sclerosis treatment of uh, multiple sclerosis is difficult because there is no definite cure for the patients and the disease modifying therapy that is uh, uh, that has a pivotal role in uh, the modification of uh, multiple sclerosis is very costly um, very costly i mean to say around uh, 5 to 10 billion 5 to 10 million a year acute relapse number one treatment of multiple sclerosis is if a patient presents with the acute attack of uh, multiple sclerosis acute attack of uh, cns demyelination for example patient may present as i have already shown if a patient may present with optic neuritis patient may present with a weakness of low limbs patient may present with a weakness of uh, hemi body this is called acute relapse acute relapse will be treated with the pulse therapy pulse therapy means high dose of steroids with a methylprednisolone 1 gram 500 to 1 gram daily for 3 to 5 days oral prednisolone may be used but iv has more beneficial role if patient doesn't respond to plasma uh, methylprednisolone uh, pulse therapy then plasma physis should be done in patients with multiple sclerosis this was the acute relapse and then disease modifying therapy these are all the drug drugs that are approved by fda all have their uh, different uses uh, doses uh, beta interferons uh, previously were used uh, but not commonly used nowadays uh, um, these are the drugs that are approved by uh, fda for relapsing remitting type of uh, multiple sclerosis i would like to share with you people uh, the newest drug that is ocrelizumab its dose is 300 uh, mg iv on day 1 and day 15 followed by 1600 mg dose every 6 months it's the most cheapest drug that is available in pakistan uh, its cost is around 1 million per year for secondary progressive ms interferons mitoxantron cyclophosphamide methotrexate and cyclosporin are approved by fda for primary progressive and uh, progressive remitting multiple sclerosis no effective therapy is approved by fda and then the most important thing that is uh, uh, in the management of multiple sclerosis is symptomatic treatment of multiple sclerosis patients uh, are young patients uh, 
uh, who were able to walk around uh, patients who were able to walk talk uh, eat uh, when they know that they are suffering from uh, multiple sclerosis and they are going to be wheelchair bound in next uh, 15 to 20 years uh, say then they are going to suffer from depression so depression should be addressed in all these patients spasticity from previous attacks uh, uh, should be addressed with the baclofentazidine, dantrolene or diazepam tonic spasm Fatigue in the muscles is a common feature of uh, multiple sclerosis, urinary dysfunction, tremors and ataxia, erectile dysfunction in males, optic neuritis, if patient, optic neuritis uh, is an attack and should be treated with methylprednisone. So symptomatic therapy of depression, spasticity should be done in the patients with multiple sclerosis. Thank you all for your patience uh, listening.